Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here at Earth and Sky and all of you online. It's great to see you virtually in my mind, wherever you may be around the globe. Uh, you might notice it looks a little bit different today. I normally like to stand uh, when I talk, but I had a little bit of an incident this last uh, recently and ended up uh, breaking my toe. So I'm going to try to talk to you a little bit about the story of your life while sitting instead. I don't always sit really well, so we will see how this goes today. Um, but it seemed kind of appropriate because I wanted to talk to you about why is this in my movie, which is a great question to ask yourself in life. It's a great question to frequently think of when things are going on in your life. The universe has a script that we all are pretty much characters in within our own lives. And guess what? You are the star of your own movie that the universe has designed with you. It's not that the universe designed it for you and dropped it in and said, let's watch them go. You had a part in the movie, in the script, in deciding what it was you wanted to do. What did you want to be? Who did you want to have as the co-actors and co-stars in your movie? And that sometimes can be a little bit of a tricky one for people because yes, that applies even to those people who really annoy us a lot sometimes. Those people that we wonder, why are they in my life? Why do they have to be here? Well, you can kind of figure it out if you ask yourself, why are they in my movie? Because you yourself, yes, hold the accountability and the responsibility of why you wanted to bring them into your life when you were on the other side writing out your script and figuring out what you wanted to come here to learn and what you wanted to come here to do. And we're all on a quest of learning and growing and doing better. Pretty much for the most part, everybody wants to always be doing better or to live the best life that they can. What that looks like is going to vary so much for every person and be so different. One person may feel like they're living their best life and they're doing fantastic. Someone else may look over at that person and say, wow, what a horrible life. <laughs> because we all have our own movies. Just like when you go to the theater, you might like to watch those intense dramas, or you might like the horror movies, or you might like the love stories and hate some of the others. We all have our own script that we designed. And guess what? Your movie of your life is a tearjerker. It's filled with drama. It's filled with intrigue and suspense and learning and love and all kinds of things because throughout our lives we experience all of these. We have moments where we are just so sad and wondering why is this in my movie and we have those moments where we're thinking I'm on top of the world. I did it. I made it. This is wonderful. I feel so lucky. And those are all just parts of the peaks and the valleys of what our script is. And if you want to learn how to enjoy your life and how to embrace and get the most out of it, coming back frequently and asking why is this in my movie? And seeing it as a movie, understanding that you are a co-creator in this. We are all creators of our own life. It's not that we've been plopped in and we're not a victim of circumstance of whatever blows our way, even if some of you may occasionally feel like that. You may feel like, no, this is not my responsibility. I would never do this. But guess what? When you put yourself in the driver's seat and you recognize and you think, you know what? I might not like it. I might really not like where I'm at in my life, wherever you are on the spectrum. And you put yourself in the driver's seat and you realize, guess what? If I'm not a victim, that means I have some control here. That means I can choose. That means I can be the creator. Yes, when you recognize that you are the creator of your life, you start being able to shift those things. Being able to just ask, why is this in my movie? Why is this person that's annoying me so much in my life, so much, whether it's a coworker or a family member, pulling it in and pulling them in as part of the reason that you're here and figuring out what are they there to teach you? What is it there to help you remember? What is it there to help you to grow a bit more. All challenges come to us 
with a reason and a gift and a blessing that when we pull them in and we recognize, we learn from them, we grow ourselves. I've talked lately off and on about the word tikkun, which is our main reason, our main challenge that uh, we come here to live. And as you figure out what one of your main challenges is and you work your way through it, then another one will come up because that's kind of what we're here for. We often will forget when we come into this 3D world of form that feels a bit heavier. We forget why we came here and we forget why we chose the movie that we chose. And it can be so easy to blame other people or to fall into the role of the victim. But I really want to challenge each of you this week to think about the question and ask when something is you're not sure about in your life anything to ask why is this in my movie why is this incident why is this situation why is this person whatever it is you're wondering about in your life ask the question why is this in my movie because everything really does happen for a reason and when you start looking at what's going on in your life through a lens of curiosity and intrigue instead of judgment letting go of judgment letting go of expectation and instead let everything just peak up that curiosity then you start looking through the eyes of not being attached to it and pulling in your power of knowing that you are a creator you're not a victim of anything and you be you're able to let that curiosity peak so that you can be curious about how to find ways around everything and how can you figure out ways and paths to make it the life that you want to make it, the life that you really want to build. And remember that the universe has a script. You were a creator of that script. You chose who the key actors and key players are for your life before you even came here and you wanted to know that those people would have certain things that would trigger you so life wouldn't just be boring where you never learned anything and you just coasted the whole way. No, you wanted to have the, those things that peak up the drama, that peak up the intrigue, that peak up the growth. Just like when you watch a movie, you probably choose something, at least frequently, that has some peaks and some valleys. But you want to look and ask that question, why are these people in my movie? Why are these actors in my movie? And remember that there is a plan and that you can constantly be rewriting that plan. Whenever we fall off of the plan, there's a kind of a big general plan that we decide on before we come, but whenever we fall off of that or we try to divert or we try to avoid or maybe we're confronting a little bit too much in a manner of avoidance too, that um, all, all of those are different um, divergence off of the path, but the universe really has a plan and the universe has a way of pulling us back onto our path when we fall off of it. Sometimes people will link that to um, angels intervening or other spirits intervening or people that just come into your life at just the right time and remind you what you're supposed to be doing. And But there's always a way, there are always different ways that we keep being pulled back onto our path within our movie. So one of the things that can be really good to remember as you're figuring out how to navigate this movie that is your life and how to learn the lessons so you can create a really good ending because you want to create the, the best ending that you can. You want to create really memorable moments that spark joy and that bring hope and that allow you to know that you're creating in the way that you want to create so that when you get to the end of the movie you can look back and think wow that was a good movie now I'm ready to go on to the next one and so one of the big things to do with that is to think about being proactive instead of reactive when we're being proactive we're letting the voice of our soul be heard when you're being proactive you're thinking like the light you're embodying the light of the universe you're being you're thinking ahead and and planning in a way that embodies the light and the goodness of of what the universe is in its highest degrees of light when you're being reactive that's the voice of the ego that's getting through we all in this world have varying degrees of ego nobody is 
all good and nobody is all bad, no matter how much they annoy or frustrate you. Um, everybody has varying degrees of ego. But that is simply a form of being reactive. When you're listening to the voice of the ego instead of the voice of the soul, that causes you to make rash decisions or to say things really quickly or just to kind of leap before you think. And, uh, and that's being different than the light. And so when you're different from the light, your vessel shrinks, shrinks and you're not able to receive all of the abundance of different blessings that you have when you allow yourself to be calm, to embody the light, to listen to the voice of your soul and really embody the light so that you can be the brightest aspect of yourself truly creating from that biggest platform. It's much easier to create, to build, and um, and really to build things when you have the light on, when you embody the light within yourself. It's much easier to create what you think you're creating when you're being the light. If you're in a darkened room or if you're being different from the light, it's a lot harder to really see and navigate what you're doing because you're in the dark. You're listening to the ego instead of letting the voice of your soul really speak out and rising in with that voice of the soul. The voice of the ego sometimes gets so loud though it can be really hard to hear the voice of the soul sometimes the voice of the ego will scream at us no 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 that's wrong they're wrong you're right no definitely should argue with them about this or you're right to be frustrated absolutely no sit in that doesn't that feel really good to just stay there <laughs> and then eventually you realize wait this maybe this doesn't feel so good that the voice of the soul is knocking on the door saying do you want a little peace do you want to be a little stress free do you want to have a little bit of light back you have to let the ego calm down clear out let go so the voice of the soul can really rise so that you can be creating and embodying the light again and a lot of times all it takes for that to happen is simply to pause instead of reacting just to pause and take a minute to think what do you want your reaction to be how do you want to see this go? Sometimes the voice of the ego says, well, I'll just push my way through and I'll just, you know, I can just ramp through and clear everybody out of the path and that creates a lot of stuff you're gonna have to deal with later if you just run through that way. But if you pause and you're quiet for a moment and you think, okay, I see the challenges around me, what a pleasurable moment to see these challenges because that means I'm about to grow. There are some things that are really pushing me and sparking me in a way that I can learn so much from the situation. I'm going to choose to grow. So I'm going to pause for a moment and listen to the quiet so my voice of my ego goes down and then you're going to hear the voice of the soul rising up within you and it's going to bring the greatest sparks of wisdom and inspiration and reminding you that you are the creator and you don't have to fight and battle to hope that you can be victorious in your life when you're really living in a victim mentality if you're in the ego sense but instead you realize oh the quiet is really nice the universe speaks to you. You remember, you are the universe, just as the universe is in you. And you start creating really amazing things as the voice of the soul rises out. It's kind of like if you think of being in the, uh, a car with a bunch of kids and the kids are fighting with each other because the ego is battling back and forth and the voices get louder and louder until finally something happens. The light comes in and there's quiet. And then you can think. You can't really think when everybody's yelling around you. So you have to find that quiet, find the pause, let yourself think, and listen to the voice of the soul. And then those are the actions that you take. And you start seeing that you're the director of the movie instead of being feeling like you're cast about in all of these different ways. So ask, pause, ask. Think, what a pleasure this is that I have an opportunity to learn. I'm not a victim, I'm a creator. I can learn from this, let me see all of these things. Then asking, why is this movie? Why did I choose these actors to be in this movie with me? How do I embody the light? How do I act like the light so that I can learn what my soul is questing to learn and questing to do in this life, in this movie? 
How can I grow? How do I become like the light? Simply asking those questions and pausing the voice of your soul will arise and will give you those answers. Really, uh, nothing exists except you and the Creator when it comes down to it. And you are the Creator. And you are the embodiment and you are a reflection of all of the people that are around you. All of the actors that trigger things good, bad, or the other in your life are an extension of who you are because truly we are all aspects of the light. We come down here to experience things in different ways, to trigger people in different ways so that we can grow and remember that we're actually all the light. So when you look at those characters that are in your movie and you start to pause and think and ask why are these people in my movie, then start to also see the voice of their soul and start to see past their ego, past your ego and recognizing that spark of light that is their soul that is the exact same as you when we come into the most core pure essence of who we are that is the spark of light that came to this 3d world to experience all kinds of things in different ways just like when you turn a light on in a room if there if you're in a darkened room and you turn the light on on one end of the room you're going to see the room lights up the shadows get uh cat cat or you can see shadows but it casts a light on everything the light doesn't just pick and choose I'm gonna shine in this corner today because I kind of feel like shining on this part and then if you set turn on the light in another part of the room and it's in the same big room then you don't see a separation of where one light ends and where the next light begins the light starts to shine through the same room it shares the same space you can turn on more and more lights and it will get brighter in the room but you won't be able to tell well this part of the room this this spot is the light from here it all mixes together that's what really is happening with our souls when we come to this planet when we're on the other side we see easily that we are all the same light we feel the same heartbeat we are in that same presence but when we come down here we start to see the bulb not the light itself we start to see the shadows not the light itself so remember that each of the people that are in your movie are extensions of yourself and how you treat those people is truly how you're treating yourself as well so remember to be kind even with the people that frustrate us and as you embody that kindness as you embody that light it's going to help shift and transform and bring up the light throughout our entire place it will help you to remember that you are the creator of your life it will help you to be able to lessen those triggers as you learn how to pause and how to reflect and to not listen to the ego to let that voice go down and to let the voice of your soul arise as you recognize why are you in my movie what am i creating and putting yourself out of the spot of victim and into the spot of being the creator. You are the light. I hope that gives you some food for thought for today. And I would encourage you to journal this week and maybe write down some of the aspects that you're worried about in your life or something that you're maybe angry about or stressed about or anxious about and think about who the people are that you feel like might be the cause and when you really reflect on it and you bring yourself in and you ask why are they in my movie why is this in my movie and you bring yourself back into embodying the light and you see the solutions begin to arise and you start to see how you are the creator which means you can create the life of your dreams you can be in that seat guiding your life forward i uh, hope that gives you some food for thought some interesting things to journal and as i've mentioned before every time you journal i recommend the last sentence you write is something you're grateful for it's going to tell you and remind your soul and remind the voice within your spirit what you're creating because you're ending with gratitude and that's where your thoughts are ending so you're creating that gratitude i wish you all the best as you create the life of your dreams and enjoy your movie have a great week everyone